But I read this in McTaggart's piece after the conclusion of the series sweep against Boston. Martin Maldonado, just talking about the offense because the offense was setting records, most hits in a five-game span in Astros franchise history. We have went on and on about this offense. Altuve, best offensive second baseman in the American League. Jordan, when he's clicking, maybe the best offensive player in baseball, one of the best offensive players in baseball. Kyle Tucker's playing, if it weren't for Shohei Otani, to a top three MVP level. Jeremy Pena's heating up. Brantley's back. Chaz has been good. Like th- You can go on and on. Yiner's been one of the best offensive rookies in all of baseball. You can go on and on about this offense. It was just a matter of getting them all going at the same time. And for you know five, day- five games in a row after you were one hit at Detroit, final two games of that series, the three games at Boston, the offense is clicking. The offense looks good. And Maldonado was asked after the game, just to the media, like what he thought about this offense. And Martin Maldonado compared the lineup to the Houston Astros 2019 lineup. Maldi said, I would say that last five games, it reminds me a little bit of 2019, the team we had. That's deep. So here's a player, not a good offensive player, and Martin Maldonado comparing this lineup that hasn't been at full cylinder all year because of injuries, because of some struggles throughout the year. But he's con- he's comparing this lineup right now to the 2019 Houston Astros. And look, it feels hyperbolic, but this is an offense. We saw McTaggart tweet the other day, too, that has the second most run since the All-Star break. Mm-hmm. It, it, it definitely, it's kind of like, uh, not smoke and mirrors, but it's kind of like where people get distracted off of seeing what really could be, right? I mean, it's one thing to say this team isn't going to be the 19 team because it wasn't this potent all year because of injuries and because guys out of the lineup. But when you look at what it could be going into the playoffs, that's a totally different story where you can make comparisons across the board simply because of what we just saw in this six-game span going 5-1 and one on the road. Simply because we saw that when everybody's healthy and now Uncle Mike can be a viable part of your offense finally, but maybe better late than never as he looked like he hadn't missed a beat in the way he's hitting the baseball, that when we talk about lineups, when we used to talk about 7-8-9 and nine being a vulnerable spot where it was almost a black hole of, of outs, to be had over the past scattered years for the Astros. And 19 was a successful year, not like that. But when you look at what they have now, there's so many different ways they can beat you. There's so many different guys that can punish you. And Maldonado in the lineup for at least two or three of those games in a five-game span is one of the only weak spots, with the exception of Jake Myers, who's hot and cold, the rest of those seven guys can rake. Yeah, and Maldi's playing three of every five games, mm-hmm. right? So, like, it kind of, yeah, he's he stinks. He's not good offensively, but at least he's playing 60% of the games as opposed to, to 90% of the games. What frustrates me, like, looking back at the 2019 season, because this was the Astros World Series lineup in Game 7. Like, th- this is all like this is all or nothing. The, your, your season's on the line. You, you're either eliminated tonight or you win the World Series tonight against Max Scherzer, Game 7 at home, Minute Maid Park, 2019. The thing that irritates me that entire postseason with, uh, with A.J. Hinch you know, especially in this game with Garrett Cole a little bit, leaving him in the bullpen. Zach Greinke was pitching well. Maybe leave him in the game. Maybe don't go to Will Harris for the third game in a row. But, but, but besides that, w- remember back then, like, the outfield share in right was 50-50. Kyle Tucker was yet to be, like, a permanent full-time player. He and Josh Reddick were sharing time in right field. So one day it'd be Josh Reddick. The next day it would be Kyle Tucker. And it aggravated me because you could tell that Kyle Tucker was a better potential player. Reddick was the veteran. And maybe there's a comparison to be drawn there. Reddick was the Maldonado then. Kyle Tucker's the Yiner Diaz then. But that's one thing that drove me crazy looking back at the, the 2019 World Series is that Reddick was getting at bats over Kyle Tucker, which is silly. But here was the Astros Game 7 lineup in 2019. And, and see how this year's lineup stacks up. And we don't really know like this set lineup currently for the Astros. You know that Altuve, Bregman are going to the top you know that Jordan and Tucker are going to be in the middle you throw in a Chaz you throw in a Yiner you throw in an Abreu it kind of changes every day which I don't care I'm not a huge like you need the same batting order every single day you know play your best players against lefties against righties whatever 2019 game seven of the World Series AJ Hinch filled it out like this 2023 Astros or this lineup in 2019 George Springer Jose Altuve Michael Brantley Alex Bregman Yuli Gurriel Jordan Alvarez was hitting sixth Carlos Correa, Robinson Chirinos, and Josh Reddick was your lineup that day. That was your lineup, Game 7, 2019 World Series. I honestly mm-hmm. think you can put up a lineup in th- with this year's team that's better. Martin Maldonado is comparing this year's team to that year's team. Here's where I think the 2023 Astros have an advantage versus that 2019 team. Middle of the order. Mm-hmm. 
Like you had Brantley, Bregman, Yuli in the middle of the order, and Brantley, great contact hitter. We know that. He's going to have tons of base hits and get on base a lot. Not a terrific power guy. Alex Bregman was hitting home runs back in 2019. Good power guy. Yuli Gurriel, he'll, he'll, he'll run into some home runs. Back then he was hitting 25 home runs a year, somewhere around there. He was a very good contact guy in 2019. I'll take this year's middle of the order over that year's middle of the order. I know that you had Jordan Alvarez, but Jordan Alvarez in 19 was not the Jordan Alvarez that you have now. You had Kyle Tucker, but he was on the bench in that game, and he's certainly not the Kyle Tucker that he is now. The middle of this lineup, whenever you're going out every single day, where you're going Jordan, Tucker, whatever combination, 3-4, I'll take over You know Brantley, Bregman, Yuli Gurriel back then. Now, this top of the order in 19... I don't know, like Springer Altuve, you still have Altuve, who's kind of the same yeah. guy, and you have Bregman, who's been on a red-hot tear since the All-Star break. I don't think Martin Maldonado's wrong. No, you know, I think it can be. It really can, and that's why when you were reading off, especially if we're just going to go off the Game 7 lineup, I think this year's team is better because I think that, you know, it depends on which George Springer you're going to get, and he could get really super hot, or he could he could go through a slump, you know, and we know that he got hot at the right moments in 17 in the World Series. You know that he was a great leadoff hitter, but Altuve has become that guy. I think the big thing to me was the fact that, you know, Chirinos wasn't anything, so with Maldi, it's a, it's a wash. Yeah, Chirinos probably a little bit better, but not not a hill right. that I'm going to die on. Exactly. And, and so when you look at the rest of the lineup, I mean, I, I think that the fact that you're taking the heart of your order, essentially, and moving it to the top of your order and have bigger, more powerful, better bats now – in the middle to the, you know, four, five, six, especially that you go, I think there's more potency right now in the lineup that if they stay healthy, Mm -hmm. that you could see in the playoffs this year, as opposed to in 19. See, it reads as a, as a hyperbolic comment from Martin Maldonado, but I I really don't think that it is 23 Astro lineup right now, whichever order the Dusty's putting them out better than the lineup that got you to the world series in 19. I mean, there was a lot of health. There was a great pitching staff. The bullpen was solid. But 19 World Series lineup, Astros lineup now, which are you picking? Also, do you believe the Astros bats can carry this team to another championship? This this team has some good starters. This team still has a very good bullpen. But can this offense put this team on its back when they need them and outslug teams? 